Hello all, welcome back. Um, good to see you again. Today we're going to make a couple of videos. The first one, we're going to concentrate on the first one now. I'm going to make our sourdough bread again. Uh, this time I'm going to make a double batch. Also because the gang at work wants, everybody wants a loaf. Um, the other thing is they may be peanut or nut allergy there. So I'm not going to use the peanuts or the trail mix. I'm going to use sun-dried tomatoes. I'm going to have two cups of sun-dried tomatoes here. A cup of these Middle Eastern olives. Why I'm using these olives is because they're kind of small, but they're very pungent, extremely concentrated olive flavor. It's like each bite is like having a load of olives explode in your mouth. And I have, I'm, I am going to use the seeds, which is flax seed, poppy seed, and aniseed that's a total of one cup so the three of them total one cup i'm using nine and a half cups of flour here and four and a half cups of water i'm gonna adjust that accordingly because flour is always different but that's that seems to be a correct ratio today and of course our starter and one day we'll make a video on how to make that i haven't done that yet um and our kosher salt and that's going to give us maybe four or five large loaves of bread. We've already put our flour and water in here. And we're going to see if we need to add a little bit. There's one about one cup of the flour left behind there. Before I put it all in, I want to see if it's all going to be needed. Because the flour, and like I said, in water, the flour always behaves differently. So you have to know how much water it needs. But you can see that easily once you start. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to make sure that all the flour and water are well incorporated. And lower that, make sure that the flour at the bottom is all mixed in. And that's what we're doing. We're just making sure that the flour and water are very well incorporated. And then what I haven't done before is before I make the dough, just this flour and water mixture I'm just gonna let it sit for about five hours. Now there's something important I should need to mention also. I haven't mentioned this before. Is that this machine is a really good workhorse. Um, but these machines you have to use, especially if you have you're making such a large, large batch of, of bread. You have to make sure that you don't run it on high. And you don't need to really. Run it on low settings and um, don't overload it, don't let it overwork. When you feel, if, if you feel that it gets too warm, slow it down a bit or stop it, let it rest a little bit and then start it again. Just to, you know, to save your machine so it doesn't burn on you. Other than that, I haven't had any problem with this machine. In fact, it's always done me perfect, absolutely perfect. And as you can see, I make huge loads of batches here. This will make me four or five very large loaves of bread all in one shot. But still, I'm careful. I, I want to take care of my machine, make sure it lasts a long time. So that's all I have to say about that. Now, while this is, until this is well incorporated, I'm going to stop the machine and let it rest for five hours. Let this rest before I add anything else, just flour and water. Okay, here we are. I've taken the, the flour and water mixture out of the dough mixer. I'm going to leave it in the bowl. I'm going to cover it with a saran wrap. And you can see this is the texture we're looking for. This is the kind of humidity that we want. That's perfect. And now I'm going to let this sit for about five hours. I'm going to come and check up on it a couple of times to see how it's reacting until it becomes very elasticy and um, well rested. And then we'll start again from there. Hello again. It's been about five hours. A little under five hours. Our flour and water have been resting. As you can see, I've already washed my hands by the way. As you can see, it's become very stretchy and it's really hydrated and I want it that way. See, look at that. It's very, very stretchy. It's very good. And we're ready to put in everything. We're putting in about um, 600 grams of starter. Always leave some for next time. So this keeps going. 
this one overflowed so I had to put it over here. More 600 grams. Side. Our other ingredients. If you remember, one cup of mixed aniseed, poppy seed, and flax seed. Total one cup. One cup of olives that have been pitted and broken up. And two cups of dried tomato, sun-dried tomato. Now, if you remember, we used um, we were I had counted nine and a half cups of flour and about four and a half cups of water. I didn't use all the flour, but I'm going to. I thought because it was too too um, humid, so I made I might use it again. Like I might add a little bit more. We're about halfway through the kneading and I'm gonna add my salt now. It's about two and a half tablespoons of kosher salt and that's gonna bring it all together. It's already starting to look fantastic. You can see it's already starting to come off the edges of the bowl. It's been needed enough. I'm going to need it for a couple more minutes. Now I did have to add about one and a half more cups of flour on top of the eight cups, so it comes back to nine and a half to ten cups as originally said. Um, so again, you have to play that by ear. But as you can see, the dough is coming together nicely. It's coming clear off the bowl there. And one to two minutes more, and we will stop it and take it over to the countertop and, and start cutting it up getting it ready for baking. But I'll, when we get there, we'll, we'll explain that. Yeah, so I'm gonna run it at, at high, mid, mid speed for about 40, 50 seconds and that's it, it's done. Our dough is done, as you can see, it's coming right off the bowl. And we don't need, to need it more than that. Yeah, I'm gonna take it out of the machine now. And I have to say, this machine is awesome just happens to be one I use. Whatever one you're using, you have to take care of it and make sure that you don't make this big batch. It's not supposed to, but she does beautifully. Take it out from here. It rolls right off the bowl. That's a sign of a very good dog. We did make quite a bit and it is hydrated only because the staff at work, my colleagues, um, wanted some bread. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut it. in space here so we have to make do oh yeah we're gonna get five molds out of this Thank you. 
welcome back this is um it's been a few hours now about maybe four hours total because it's been a little chilly in here so it took a little longer for this dough to rise these are the last two loaves i'm baking them in the dutch ovens i'm gonna score them and i'm gonna put them in the oven at 500 degrees 505 degrees for 25 minutes to 30 minutes and then I am going to lower the heat after 30 minutes to 400, 410. For another 25, 30 minutes and then take them out and then I'll show you when we get there. Okay, at 30 minutes after we put them in, we open the oven and Took the lid off and then lowered the heat from 505 to 410 and it's been about just under 30 minutes now and as you can see these look fantastic they've risen quite a bit um, they look beautiful I'm just gonna wait a little bit and then take them out of the, the Dutch oven and then I'm sure I'm gonna slice a nice piece here and this bread looks amazing I'm going to slice a bit of this. My first slice, it's still very hot. This came out of the oven maybe 10 minutes ago. It's still very, very hot. But the texture is very nice. And inside, you can see. Yeah, I shouldn't be cutting it now. Look at this. Look at that. Beautiful. Let me see, let me take a taste. Mmm. 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 Very nice and tasty. Yeah. So this is our um, olive and sun-dried tomato sourdough. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to our videos and like them.